Mike speeds it in. Deaner to win it. God, he's done it again! Travis Deaner and the Golden Eagles are the champions of TBT. It can be said for every two minutes of championship celebration, there are eight seasons of dedication, creativity, and sacrifice. TBT, the basketball tournament, turns eight this summer, and its direction has never been more impressive. Through its seven championships, there have been over 400 teams who have competed in America's best and only open basketball tournament. Over 5,000 of the best players from around the basketball universe have made each succeeding year this celebration of the game a unique tournament to remember. Year 8 will be even better as TBT welcomes a record 28 college alumni teams, all chasing the million-dollar winner-take-all jackpot. It's world-class basketball on the most innovative stage in the game. Uniquely, it's the basketball tournament. Settle in and welcome to TBT season number eight. Wichita, there is a buzz. TBT, third round action. It is win or go home. Tonight, a wild atmosphere at Cook Arena. It is the second game of the day, and it features a team that is going to be very popular here at the locals. It is the three-seeded Challenge ALS taking on the two-seed Aftershocks. The Aftershocks representing alums from Wichita State. We are on the campus of Wichita State. What an advantage that is for the Aftershocks. You would think, take a look at the, what the Wichita Regional looks like. Already today, a massive upset. The number one seed, Everline Drive, eliminated by Florida TNT. We still have this one. See who will join Florida TNT in Dayton for championship week, July 31st. So much fun we have had here over the last week here in Wichita with my partner, Fran Fraschilla. I am Eric Collins, and you've been doing this for years and years and years. Fran, is it always like this? It is. It is. High-level basketball. These guys are pros. You can't, you can't quit. You can't, you got to play 40 minutes or 36 or 32 plus even ending. <laughs> Whatever it is, what we saw in the last game, very emblematic of TBT. Pro players making big shots, not giving up even when they're down 15 points. Everline drive the number one seed. Everyone thinking just going to cruise into the championship week. They had a 15-point lead, and it all went away in the second half. Absolutely. Everline drive four NBA players, former NBA players on the roster. Things look good for these guys in the first half. They were cooking with gasoline, but that's not how it rolls in TBT. They never shut the door on Kenny Boynton and Brandon Robinson and Dominique Jones and Kenny Boynton, the former Gator. Giving him the lead down the stretch in the Elam ending. And watch this right here. Little shake and bake, Hezzy move. Chris Warren, the old Miss Rebel, takes TNT to Dayton. The big bracket updated. That's one of the really cool things here about TBT. All right, we still have one more to go here in uh, the third round of the Wichita Regional. Let's talk specifically about some of these teams. Challenge ALS, they really haven't been challenged so far. they played two very good games. One of the experienced teams in this league, Sean Mar Marshall, the former Boston College star, now the general manager, pretty much on the sideline, but he's got a good group of guys. Players you've heard of, uh, terrific. Marvel Harris, sure. that's the guy that's impressed us, the former Fresno State Bulldog and uh, former Mountain West Player of the Year. Linebacker playing full guard. All he's doing in this tournament is averaging 23 points a game for Challenge ALS. And on the other side, Connor Frankamp grew up here in Wichita. He is the all-time leading scorer in Wichita High School history. Some pretty good players, Perry Ellis among them, uh, Antoine Carr, and Cliff Flemington. But this kid, watch this steal, basket, Amazing ending, one of the great endings in TBT history. They beat Omaha Blue Crew. Third member of our crew, Jen Hale. She's standing by. Jen, take it away, my friend. We are making TBT history tonight, Franny and Eric. This is the largest crowd ever in TBT history. After Wichita's miracle finish on Sunday, 4,000 more of Wichita's faithful all snapped up tickets to tonight's game. They are going to be going crazy tonight. So, Eric, as you said, a huge home court advantage for the Wichita.
Wichita State alums. However, a daunting hurdle for Team Challenge ALS. Their coach, Darren Collison, a wily 10-year NBA vet, has spoken a lot with them about it. Yes, they're professionals, but you know, because of COVID, it's been a while since they faced a hostile environment. So, Darren's advice to them, the best way to shut down a crazy crowd like this, make it rain buckets early and often. We'll see if Team Challenge ALS is up for it. It's going to be a fantastic matchup either way, guys. Jen, thank you so much. Let's listen into this crowd. Pacific star, high flyer. You can watch him play basketball someday in the association. He's got that kind of body. Four regionals in TBT action. Wichita, West Virginia, Columbus, and Peoria. First two regionals to finish up will be West Virginia and Wichita. Two teams from every site, so 18 total, advance the championship week in Dayton starting July 31st. The basketball tournament third round action underway. Tap is won by Challenge ALS. Gerald Robinson, he's a rocket ship, really quick. Former Georgia Bulldog. Here he goes. Robinson missed the layup. Stevens gets an offensive rebound. Sets up Dentman. You just got to figure that's a huge shot for Dentman and his confidence. We were doing laundry to the, together today, okay? We were doing the laundry, and he said he was going to come out and play well tonight. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. Only a TBT. Yeah, only a TBT. Former MVP of the G League back in 2012. Nice. Rolling to the cup. Kelly spits it out to Brown. Zach Brown misfires. Offensive rebound snapped up by McDuffie. Two for a quarter, and Brown's got it! It's gonna be like this all evening long when you have to shot to make a bucket, but Denman not to be denied. He's got six threes. Two-game slump, at least for now, is over for the former Washington Husky. Ball poked loose, first man on the floor, Mawube. And what are we gonna have? It is a tie-up. We have the alternate possession here at TBT, so it stays with the aftershock. This crowd is sensational, but this uh, Challenge ALS team, these guys have played high-level basketball. Be very surprised if they're intimidated. Their coach is not Darren Collison. Yep, that's right, the Darren Collison. 10-year veteran of the NBA, just retired Somewhat uh, surprisingly, the height of his powers two years ago. He's staying involved with the game that he loves. 
by coaching for the first time here with TBT. Aaron Powell seems to shoot it. He was quicker than a hiccup. Quality NBA point guard. Catch and shoot. Off the mark by Zach Brown. Made one a moment ago. This time to misfire. Detman's got all six right now for Challenge ALS. And a travel. Thought he got a little greedy. He got into too much traffic in there. Lost his balance. There you see Zach Bush. Coach of the team, former player. Yeah, Zach Bush and Zach Brown for the after shots. We've got pretty good players on that bench helping Zach Brown out. Connor Frank Camp, the hero. This is McGee wraparound pass. Kelly looking for help. Calls his own number. He almost went Ben Simmons right there. Went to the rim with a shot, gave it up, but decided he'd shoot it. Harris gets knocked to the floor. They're going to call a tripping foul. It goes against Tyrus McGee. Take a look. Watch the drive. Watch the footwork. He's looking for the kick out. Can't find anybody. And Rashad Kelly is one of those guys who was an absolute winner here in Wichita. They love this guy. Harris with the basketball in his hand. He's like a rolling ball and stick now. You don't want to get in front of him. Tapped out. Last touch by Challenge ALS. You'll see tonight those names on the back of the Challenge ALS jerseys are those people who are battling ALS or have battled and passed away. It's a, just a great, great uh, cause that these guys have played for throughout their careers in, in uh, TBT. McDuffie gets to the rim. And if you could put a number on it, would you put a number on the advantage that the aftershocks have just by playing in this goal and you give them extra two points? No doubt. No, oh, no doubt about it. These guys, in fact, if anything, we, we, what we've seen in the past and, and over the weekend, pressure on aftershocks to play well in front of this crowd. Now that I think they've gotten the jitters out, there's no question this crowd helps them. Rain Camp hasn't shot the ball so far. Blocked away. Stevens goes in full. To the rim! Stevens both ends of the floor. He's impressive. Former San Diego State Aztec. McGee. Rebounded by Mawube. Here's Marvell Harris bottled up. Checking with uh, Jen about Marvell. Indeed, Eric. This is the first time in this TBT tournament we've seen Marvell Harris in the starting lineup. He's been playing off the bench in the past two games. He carried the offensive load 21 points a game high last time. Challenge ALS feels like they have to punch this Wichita team and the crowd in the mouth. So that's why we're seeing Marvell in the starting lineup tonight. Thank you, Jeff. Marcus McDuffie hits a three pointer. It's actually run into by Marvell Harris. Didn't get a call. But it's now a two-point lead for the home team. I think these two teams figuratively are going to be punching each other in the mouth all night long. Yes, Marvell Harris. It's the Amtrak special from San Diego to L.A. McDuffie. Did he travel? He did. So here, four minutes into the ball game, we've had a travel on both sides. First substitution of the game is going to be the after shot. McDuffie hey! leads the ball game. Coming in to replace him. We have David DeLeo. DeLeo, who is known as an outside shooter, has yet to really find his footing here in TBT action. To the point where he's 0 for 11. This is a guy that made 300 shots, 300 threes at Central Michigan. Also into the game, Clevin Hanna for the after shot. And where's number 31? Made a couple of threes, working on Frank King. 
Eight early points for Dittman. Heating up, heating up. He knows he didn't play well first two games. Kelly backing down Dettman. Lost the handle. Dettman pulled the chair out from under him. What a find. Robinson finds Stevens and a chance for a three-point play. Great pass. Great speed by Robinson. And we got a little, we got a little action after the play. We'll tell you about it when we come back. Take a look at our hustle play brought to you by E and J Brandy. That's right here. There's the chair being pulled out. Cross court pass. Great look. Great hustle by Deshaun Stevens. And uh, then we had a little bit of woofing afterwards. That's a hustle play. And then watch Joe Robinson and head coach of the Aftershocks, Zach Bush. They go nose to nose. So they've been assessed double technical fouls. We had. Uh, Little bit of beefing, nothing much. Officials got in there, so double text. Put the ball in play, two free throws. They were actually slapping five after that was all over, so. Typical of TBT, these guys are pros, they, they don't really get into that nonsense like they did back when they were younger. So this is gonna finish off the three-point possibility for challenge ALS. Stevens made the layup, was fouled. And a lane violation. Oh, goodness. I don't know what Clevin Hanna was doing. That's interesting because it's impossible to get a lane violation in FIBA rules. They just don't call it. And Clevin thought he had a flashback to being in Italy last year. They just never called it. What'd they say? No damage done. Ball don't lie. Ball don't lie. <laughs> the Chiefs said it best. <laughs> Aftershocks down four. Hannah's first shot of the game. And he really gets up on that jump shot of his. David DeLeo trying to help out any way possible. Gets an offensive rebound and is fouled. That young man played at Central Michigan. Dad, a longtime NBA scout. And uh, David was a teammate last year of uh, Connor Frank Cap and Mercia in this ACB league. He was recruited to play on this Aftershocks team as a shooter. <laughs> but he's hustling. DeMonte Dodd into the game. Big man wears number 35. He's got the basketball. Six feet, 11 inches. 
Todd, a half foot too strong. Chapman JLS still playing with their starting unit together. We're over five minutes into the game, no substitutions. A lot of switching out there on, on the part of Challenge ALS. And Frank Camp trying to take advantage. Sets up DeLeo. Finally something called for David Leo. <laughs> Nobody feels better than that guy. <laughs> I told you he could shoot it. You didn't believe me. <laughs> Stevens on the block. Couple of subs waiting to check in for Challenge ALS. Harris. Offensive rebound, Stevens. Man, is he athletic. Robinson sets up Mwupe. And he's fouled. Chance for a three-point play. Gerald Robinson is impossible to keep out of the lane. Former Georgia Bulldog, he's 32, still playing. At a level with that speed. But watch David DeLeo right here. Finally! And man, is he happy. And I love, you were right, Mwupe. Really live body, young guy. Squid, that looked like Jamal Crawford. Yeah. Good looking young player. This is the free throw. He's going to fly in right early here for Challenge ALS, the free throw line. Hitting the deck is Hampton's foul. These officials, it's not college rules. They'll let you play physically, but you can't put the offensive player at a disadvantage right there. Six fouls as well in TBT action. Changes for both sides for Challenge ALS. Devontae Friga comes in. He is a YouTube star, makes bank with his YouTube videos of him playing pickup basketball across the country. Street ball. Makes more money doing that than he ever did playing overseas. Also into the game for Challenge ALS, Jordan Faison. Faison's had a nice TBT. Change to tell you about for aftershocks into the game for the first time is Samaj Haynes Jones. That's the bus that Devontae Friga travels around the country with. Something outside the hotel. Thank you. A team of engineers and producers, camp operators, who videotape all the things he does throughout the course of the day and they put it on YouTube and literally hundreds of thousands of people watch. Let's check in with Jen. You know, Eric, with all those followers and all that fame for Devontae, he says he is actually having the most fun he's ever had here, playing in TBT, practicing with these guys. He's living out a dream come true to be playing live on ESPN. And it's a win-win for TBT, too, as well, because this is bringing a whole new segment of viewers into TBT. So it's a fantastic situation for everybody, and we're so glad Devontae's enjoying his experience so much. I don't know how it happened, so, but YouTube's amazing. It's just what he's doing, the video that he had about his weekend here in yeah. Wichita just auto-populated into my, I popped open on YouTube this afternoon, and boom, I saw the video that he created. I think John, I think uh, TBT founder John Ugar put this guy on retainer for all the exposure he's uh, adding. Well, he can play. Yeah, he can play. At a Mount Union College. Now that's out of control right there. Aftershocks basketball. Good defense. Marvell Harris swallowed up. He knows he got himself in deep. Former Fresno State star. After shots playing without Connor Frank yet. Samaje Haynes Jones runs the point. The quiet first quarter for Frank Kent. Here's Haynes Jones. DeLeo. Two of the row, and DeLeo went with that partner. He was missing in action the first two ball games. Denton in a long three. Zach Brown lost the handle, tried to dribble between two defenders. Good luck. Too much. Stevens short armed it. Final 40 seconds of our first quarter. It's been the game we were hoping for. Winner advances to Dayton Championship Week. 
and will only be three wins away from a million dollars. Shot clock is on. Dallas JLS will take the air out of the ball, take the final shot of the quarter. And we know this guy can get a shot. The coach and Shallow JLS is already way on the other side of half court. And nice. starts inside. Ball fake. And the shot is missed in the corner by Faison. No blood. We've played one quarter here in Wichita. It's a dead heat. Sweet 16 here in the Tuesday night in Wichita. 16 all. Challenge ALS and aftershocks. Second quarter action in a moment. TBT, the basketball tournament, is presented by Puma and by Ian e J. Brandy, the official spirit of the TBT. TBT, the basketball tournament, is presented by Puma and by Ian e J. Brandy, the official spirit of the TBT. Where were you for the miracle of the Wichita Regional? It happened a couple of days ago on Sunday afternoon. Just a tremendous ball game. The Aftershocks winning an Elam ending Connor Brandkamp layup. Finished with 24 points. Just a uh, Hysteria in the building against an all-time hated rival the Omaha Blue Crew the Creighton alumni team. What an atmosphere Devontae Friga comes off the screen his first shot Friga! That's a three-pointer for the YouTube star Say what I love about that Darren Collison created that ISO for Friga I mentioned Mount Union not necessarily a basketball power, actually better in football. Unbelievable in football. That's Division Three. McDuffie hits the deck. And Harris says that he kicked his foot out. That's why he hit the deck. But the officials don't agree. So we, three We have seen that McDuffie. a lot. Yeah, watch Frieger right here. Little isolation. Man, let me go back to him again. So Frieda gets knocked to the floor by Fran Camp on the other end of the floor. Well, I think Harris did yeah. barrel into McDuffie. Apples and oranges. Marcus McDuffie's winning share will be sent to him with Zell. If the Aftershocks win, $71,428 going into his bank account. You may remember Marcus McDuffie as a guy from New Jersey who starred for St. Anthony's at Hall of Famer Bob Hurley. 
it's rare that they get a kid to come out to the heartland and end up having the career that Marcus did. Meat Loaf special. Two out of three eight bats. He's disappointed. Huh? Robinson, Bobby Jones comes into the game. The NBA player Bobby Jones. He's on three guys. And Harris rounding up the five to challenge ALS. Hazan, nice down there in the block. Very effective in a couple of ball games. Takes the time, uses that final scores. Low post action right there from Hazan, uh, who played at Cal Poly Pomona, D2 Power in California. Playing in Japan right now. Connor Frank came back into the game for the aftershocks. Good catch by Keller. Sets up Haynes Jones. Three-point lead for Challenge ALS. The step through by Harris called for travel. Interesting. It didn't look like he took that second step, but Keith Kimball's made that call before. Watch. Watch Faison now. He's just going to take you down to the low post and put you in the blender. Takes his time. You know Haynes Jones doesn't want to come over and double team him. Get an elbow to the grill. Yeah. I'm surprised. I, Keith Kimball, I don't think he traveled. Good official. Dominic Johnson into the game for the first time to challenge ALS. One and done. Oh, offensive rebound. Look at Kelly. Work the glass. And Wax is Franken. What's impressed me about Frank Camp is he was a shooter here, and we've seen him get to the lane. He's really crafty. He got popped in the face on this drive. Take a look right here. Ooh. He's on. Got him good. Coach Schiller, when you were at St. John's or New Mexico or Manhattan, did you have a Frank Camp or something? I should have had a Frank Camp, yeah. I should have copyrighted it. And the T-shirts. Kelly straight on look. Challenge ALS can't get it back. Oh my goodness! How did you do that? Marcus McNuffy with a circus shot. What that was was vintage Wichita State hustle on the glass. We've seen that before. Mismatch here size-wise. Harris sets up Johnson. Offensive rebound, Bobby Jones, who makes a hard tumble. 37-year-old's gonna have to make sure he's okay. Former Washington Husky, played for Lorenzo Romar at a Long Beach Poly High School. But let's watch my Marcus McGuffey. First of all, watch the hustle on the glass, Eric. And then the acrobatic move right there. You know what that is? PhD, baby. Proper hand discipline. Proper hand development. Development. Come on. I'll figure it out at some point. <laughs> That's that spin I don't stuff. Know if that was the proper hand. Oh, well, well, maybe that was reverse to the left. You like that spin, right? right? And we've got a foul called on Bobby Jones. Should have known better. Played with six different NBA teams. Bobby Jones, he looked at that official and said, you right. You right. I think those are only words, though. He didn't really agree. <laughs> Frank Kemp. Buys it.
Let's take a look at today's turning point brought to you by E&J Brandy in the National Urban League. Perfect pick and roll. They created that indecision at the top of the key. Connor Frank Camp dropping it off. And take a look at Marcus McDuffie from St. Anthony's in Jersey City to the, the Heartland in four great seasons for Wichita State Shockers. After the timeout challenge, ALS down by three. Having a hard time just getting the offense started. Shot clock already down to eight. Dentman, he's got eight points. Gonna have to find the fadeaway. Great defensive job done right there by the aftershocks. McGee finds McDuffie. Wanted it too much. Yep, that pass needed to be on target a little bit better from Tyrus McGee. Former Iowa State star. Best ever come out of Springtown, Oklahoma. Springtown, Oklahoma. Not the best baseball player ever come out of there. That would be UL Washington. What a reference. Bobby Jones! <laughs> Connor Frankham hasn't scored so far for the aftershock. Frankham. That's a Steph Curry Hezzy right there. Dominic Johnson bodied up and draws a foul. Called on Franken. Watch this hesitation dribble to freeze the bigger player. Hezzy in and out. Freeze him. Too late. Great release. You got to have that in your arsenal if you're a smaller guard, which Connor Frankamp at 6'2 is. He's played so well in Europe his first couple of years. He will be heading to Russia this year. By the way, replacing Kevin Pangos oh, goodness. In, at Zenit in St. Petersburg. Former Gonzaga star. Absolutely. Big man Faison. Of the Lions game would throw the ball coming yes. out the other way. Just didn't fall. That a long run used to do that. Uh -oh. Frank made it three a moment ago. This time off the window too strong, but there's a reason. We've got a foul. We've got a timeout on the floor under the four-minute mark of our second quarter. Aftershock's on a run. Time to look at the road to one million dollars sent with Zell, Connor Franken. Yeah. All right, Davis in. Let's go. Look. Hey, guards, you got to attack. Just keep attacking, all right? Keep attacking, but look, D, JD, look who you're attacking, all right? Look at the mismatch, all right? Obviously, there's mismatches on the floor like the big fella, and we can attack him, all right? Come on. All right, look, this you, JD. You're going to pass it to G. G, you going to hand off. JD, you set the screen down here. All right, you're going to set the screen on the big fella, all right? Five, you coming up. Marvell, you coming off the pick and roll, all right? Time to look at the road to $1 million sent with Zell. Connor Frankin, the aftershocks 
here on the ropes in round two versus Omaha Blue Crew trailing heading into the Elam ending Connor Frankamp scored 11 of the Aftershocks final 13 points including this game winner to carry the team to the round of 16. If the Aftershocks win the $1 million prize, Frank Camp says he'll donate a portion of his share to Save the Whales, an organization that he's really passionate about. He'll save the remaining portion to invest for his future. Don't forget, each TBT champion share of the $1 million prize will be sent with Zell. For more on Donald Frank Camp, let's check in with Jen Hale. Connor has been fantastic this tournament so far. He's only hit one three in this game, but you can bet that's going to change. He is money from deep. So money, in fact, that Friday, he, along with Anthony Mathis, won the Wichita three-point contest for this region. That means they are advancing to Dayton, Ohio, to try to win $33,333 as they face off. Enchantment, excuse me, Anthony Mathis, that you'll see in Dayton. You'll be calling that contest too, Eric. I will. Why not? I think David DeLeo should be in that contest. He has now made three from three from behind the arc. A radical difference for the first two games that he played. So he's three for 14 now. And believe me, we talked to him in between games. He was feeling it. He knows he was brought to this team by Connor Frankamp to do exactly this. In the first two games, obviously, he came up a little empty, but this guy can shoot it. You don't go to Spain's ACB, the second best league in the world, have a great rookie year like he did without being a good player. First free throw is good for Marvell Harris. Take a look at how Challenge ALS plans to share their $1 million prize set with Zell. Bunch of fives. Every single person associated with the team is going to get $55,555. Aaron Collison, head coach of Rancho Cucamonga, California. I like it. He played college ball for one year with Drew Holiday. He also played a couple years with Russell Westbrook, Kevin Love. Good players, Aaron Ben Howland, Howland, right? We told us yesterday, Ben Howland brought in. Some ballers, they were tough too. They were great defensively. Challenge ALS down seven. Patrick Wembert wearing number two for Challenge ALS. We haven't seen him so far in this tournament. Marvell Harris hits a three. He's starting to get hot. Yep, and I think Marvell, he's been more of a facilitator early. I think he's got to be as aggressive as he was in the first two games with his own scoring. David Weaver is in for Challenge ALS. Here's Fran Camp. He was open, didn't panic, knew he had time, and drops in a three. Very crafty off the dribble. Harris, like a yeah. wrap around reverse. How athletic was that? He's had a couple of those kind of plays where he sprayed it out to the wings, but he's better getting into the basket. Watch out. DeLeo! Oh, he missed the short follow. I would love to play poker with David DeLeo. <laughs> Keeps he everything in. Keep his emotions Keeps inside. Keeps everything in. <laughs> oh, man. He's been making those hustle plays. You and I were talking off camera about Tom Chambers. Yes. The great Phoenix Sun. I thought, man, that looks a little like Tom Chambers out there. I'll tell you what. He Tom doesn't jump like that. Bounce. He can bounce. Oh, Mark Jackson. Oh. I think he's still got Tom Chambers' knee print on his forehead. Just destroyed him. <laughs> an official timeout here. What this is all about. To have it. You know what it is? That's not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing, nothing's happening in their pool. Well, something <laughs> not to like him in Derek Collison. That's not our fault. Okay, I understand that he listens to us. Whatever's happening is going to go against them. them. Everything they need to know. We're we seeing here Derek Collison playing the game. That's a mistake by him. Oh, goodness. We're hearing that maybe Challenge ALS tried to put someone into the game 
was not on the official roster? Well, we were told that Rembrandt was going to play tonight. Who he's but he's not on our chart. He may not be in the scoreboard. So Pete Kimball, who's done a number of finals for us, Can I talk to you? came over to tell us Can that Rembert was Can not in the book. He's not on our TV charts. We were told that he would play tonight. Hey, Pete, talk to you. Okay, good. 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 Okay, good. Put yourself in our shoes. All right, so it's going to be Evan. Okay, so what are we supposed to do when we told him everything? I would tell you, by rule, get somebody over there to physically do it. Only thing we can do is do it. One technical free throw and it's missed, so no damage done. But apparently, Patrick Rembert is allowed to stay in the game. Let's check in with Jen. Eric, it's a very interesting situation. Jerome Randall is supposed to be ALS's lead point guard. He ended up not playing. Patrick flew in yesterday, got in after practice, spent some time in film study with ALS, trying to prep for today. He was a main piece for them today, even though he hasn't played with them. They really needed his offensive firepower. So we will see how this plays out and how well he can assimilate. Eric? Well, then Hannah hits the three-pointer. Possession after he missed the technical free throw. So he atones in a big way. Harris. Gets it right back for Challenge ALS. This is exactly what Marvell has, Harris has to do. They do not have a player on the aftershocks that can guard him one-on-one. -on -one. So he's got to stay aggressive. There's an offensive foul by Dodd. Dodd trying to spring free. David DeLeo called for the personal. I want to see Marvell Harris do this more, which is be aggressive, pass second, score first. Averaging over 20 points a game in the first two games. He's really unguardable. Daniel JLS has been down by as many as nine. Yes, yes, yes. And a chance yes, to tie yes. it now. Chance for a three-point play to tie this ball game at 36. Marvell Harris to the line. And I think Darren Collison was thinking what I was thinking, which is get him the ball, get out of the way, and let him do what he's doing. Say, right? Great minds think alike. We are tied at 36. Game was tied at 16 after the first quarter. And after the run by the aftershocks, challenge ALS is answered. Marcus McDuffie back into the game. He's got the ball. Honor Frank Camp sitting for the aftershocks as we play the final 50 seconds of our first half. and a foul, and it goes against the aftershocks. Empty possession. And if Challenge ALS hurries, they can go two for one. Two possessions here in the final 35 Get seconds. Detman takes his time, and now that window of opportunity slams shut. Harris should have shot it. Too late. Harris got inside, had the ball knocked away. His arm was hit, so Harris goes back to the line. That's my bread and butter in the second half if I'm Darren Collins. 15 first half points for Marvell Harris. And I thought Marvell should have been more aggressive early to create that two for one, but he still gets himself to the lane. He's going to grab a couple of free throws. Harris three for three at the strike. This week, Wednesday Night Baseball features a good pitching matchup. Kyle Hinton for the Cubs taking on Adam Wainwright the Cardinals. Action starts 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Marvell 16th TBT game. Wonderful first half for Marvell Harris. And the aftershocks call a timeout. This may be to get Connor Frankamp back into the game. Frankamp's been sitting for a while. Shot clock is off. 
22 seconds remain in our first half. Who's in? David? He's got Garrett Stutz, Irish. won an NIT title on that bench, Sorry, along with Ron Baker, right. Right. NBA player. For who? Took uh, Utah State to the final four, along who's with Fred Van Lee. Who's out? Spent the weekend here. Who's, with who's out of the game? See, Freddy? Yes, God's out. God's out. God is out. It's God One, is out. two, three, four, five, six. Uh, is Maj out of the game? Right here. All right, this five right here. This five. All right, Connor's bringing the ball to the floor. David, you're gonna brush him. Tyrus, you're going over. You're catching, all right? Right as that's happening, you're left in. Dribble handoff, all right? Throw it right back to Connor. Now, David, high on the floor, ball screen. You can go here. Mark, you go to this corner, all right? So it's throwing it right back, DHO, throw it right back. High on the floor, middle ball screen. Go. Tyrus is here, David is here. Everybody else corners, this is Connor. Go. In the huddle brought to you by Puma Basketball. Uh, we know here at Wichita State, pretty good at counting six. <laughs> I think they're trying to sneak a six guy on there, but obviously I think it looks like they're going to draw this up for Connor. Should end up in a little pick and roll for him. And he's been very creative uh, with the ball in his hands. Just turn So Frank Kent crosses the timeline. Bobby Jones, the defensive stopper back in his day. Frank Kent. Frank King can't get the ball. Good job by Jones. McGee's going to have to do something. Tapped around, and that'll do it for our first half of play. If the lamp had fallen, it would be a tied ball game here at the break. It doesn't. So the aftershocks go into that locker room down by a pair. Well played first half. Both sides really into it. Great crowd on a Tuesday night here in Wichita. And we have something to look forward to in the second half. No question about it. The atmosphere in here is it's the best crowd ever at a TBT game in eight years. And we've seen the excitement, the electricity in here. And I think we're going to have a great second half. So it was tied at 16 after the first quarter. Challenge ALS wins the second quarter by two points to lead heading into intermission. Let's check in with Jen Hale, who is standing by with the Aftershock head coach, Zach Bush. Jen. Breathless first half there, guys. Coach, you opened up a nice lead at one point versus ALS, but they came on back. What allowed them to get back in this one? One-on-one -on -one defense. You know, you can't let guys bully drive you. We got to hold our own. We got to take a charge. We got to step in. Um, got to come over and protect the rim. I liked our defense for about 90% of that half, but right there, we couldn't finish strong. Obviously, so much emotion in this game. We've already seen some technicals, so much on the line. What do you tell your guys about poise and control to close this one out, especially when you get to that Elam ending? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta stay the course. We got a little emotional uh, in the Creighton game. You know, there's high energy in here. You got the crowd, it's a tight game. We're playing good basketball. You can't let all of that make you make poor decisions. Coach, thanks for your time. Best of luck, second half. Thank you. For sure. Guys. Again, thank you so much. All right, I'm ready to go. Why do we have to stop? Let's keep it going. We will step aside. We've reached halftime here, but uh, a lot yet to be decided here in Wichita. It's a two-point challenge ALS lead at the half.
Welcome into our halftime report here on ESPN, presented by the Air Force Reserve. What a fantastic first half of action between Team Challenge ALS and the Wichita State alums. It is living up to the billing, everything we expected it to be. We will have second half action right around the corner after this, but first we are joined by a very special guest tonight, Isaac Brown, one of my fellow Gulf Coast kids kicking it here in Wichita. He was the interim coach of the Shockers for a while, a longtime assistant. He was named head coach with just a few games left to go in the season, and now he will begin his first year as the full-time head coach of the Shockers coming up. Coach, first, let me ask you to put on your analyst cap. What did you think of that first half of action between your Wichita State alums and Challenge ALS? I thought we played well. We got to do a better job of on the glass of boxing out, and we got to do a better job of contesting number 23. He's taking over the game in the second half. He got 17 points, so we got to do a better job of slowing him down. To have an alumni team like this representing and a crowd like this here supporting, what does that do for recruiting when you're trying to attract the next generation of Shockers? It does a lot for recruiting. These kids see this game on ESPN in front of a packed house. I'm glad our players are able to come back to Wichita to play in front of family. They do so much in the community. They throw the camps. They mentor our younger players. They do a great job. I'm just happy to see them back home. We love the alumni teams. We have a record 28 this year in TBT, and they always attract such a fantastic following. Let's get to your team, the Shockers. You got to be head coach for a couple of games last season. Now it's fully in your hands. What can Wichita fans expect from your group this season? We want to build on last year. We won our first AAC Conference Championship. We advanced to the NCAA Tournament. We came up a little short, but we just want to be a little bit better than we were last year and try to get back to that NCAA Tournament. Because you were a longtime assistant, you know this Aftershocks team very well. A lot of these guys played for you. Put you on the hot seat. Who do you want with the ball in his hands when the Elam ending if the game is on the line tonight? Well, if the game is on the line, I'm probably going to give it to Connor Fran Kemp because he's the best shooter in the building. But anybody that's hot, you know, if Marcus McDuffie getting it late in the game, we could give it to him as well. Wise words, Coach. Thanks for your time. And, hey, best of luck with your squad this season. Thank you for having me. Be sure to keep it right here. We have a tight game. We will have second half action coming up right around the corner. Thanks for watching this halftime report presented by the Air Force Reserve.
Welcome back, everyone. We are in Wichita, Kansas. We are getting ready for the final two quarters. The winner of this game uh, will be heading to Dayton, Ohio Championship Week. They'll be three wins away from $1 million. So far, so good for Challenge ALS. They lead the Aftershocks by two here at the break. With my partner, Fran Fraschilla, I am Eric Collins. Uh, Fran, it kind of looked like the Aftershocks were going to run away and hide at the 3.30 mark of the second quarter. They led by nine, but then they spit the bit and gave it all back. Marvell Harris, two words. Guy came in averaging 23 points a game. He's got 17 in the half. And as I've said a couple of times tonight, you can't guard this guy. Not here in this Aftershocks team. He can kill you from inside, kill you from outside, gets downhill to the basket. Just a runaway freight train, and he's been really tough for Challenge ALS. For Aftershocks, a guy that was missing in action. He was in witness protection, but they found him. And three threes by David DeLeo, the former Chippewa star who's been added to this roster. And then Marcus McDuffie, four-year starter, more or less for this Shocker team. He's been outstanding as well. McDuffie has 11 to lead the way for the Aftershocks. Harris has 17 to lead Challenge ALS. Connor Frank camp everything but down. Blocked away, Mawufe! Took it away from McDuffie. Oh, they ran a great hammer play, which is a screen on the opposite side. And uh, didn't work, didn't go down. Great, great block by the big fella. Challenge ALS had a superlative end to that second quarter. Can they build on it? Robinson feeds Stevens. One-handed catch, and he's fouled. Darren Collison. Hey! He has been super calm, calling all the shots. His team was down nine at the 339 mark in the second quarter. And they were able to weather the storm. Justin Dentman. Long two-pointer. A little bit off. McGee. Oh, got great elevation on that jumper. Finally, he's been struggling too, along with DeLeo the first couple games. Tyrus McGee can shoot that rock. Marvell Harris, 17 points next to his name. Gets a screen from Mawugbe. Last touch by Mawugbe. Let's check in with Jen. Eric, you were talking about Darren Collison and a chance to visit with him out of the locker room. Moving Marvell Harris into the starting lineup has accomplished exactly what he hoped it would. He's been a juggernaut in the first two games, and his spark has carried over into this starting lineup, including Justin Dentman. Ooh, look at that. Now, Patrick Rembert, they really need some shooting out of him this half, so expect to see more of him. We'll see how well he can assimilate with the squad, guys, because, again, he got in after practice yesterday. Hasn't had any practice time with this Challenge ALS squad. Patrick Rember played just a handful of minutes in that first half. Remember, uh, he was inserted and wasn't properly inserted into the scorebook, and so it cost a technical free throw. No hard, no foul, though, as technical free throw is missed by the aftershocks. There's Patrick Rembert. Yep, you see the young man, former Cal Irvine Anteater, who's uh, playing overseas like all these guys are pretty much. Three-point lead for the aftershocks. Playing in front of a uh, decidedly partisan crowd. Team made up of Wichita State alums playing here on the campus of Wichita State. The Wolf Bay. Can't handle the rebound. Frank Camp comes away with it. Kelly lost it. Robinson fouled in the backcourt. We didn't think this Challenge ALS team would be rattled by the crowd, and they, they certainly have. Challenge ALS, fifth TBT. 2017, they were the TBT runner-up. Lost to overseas elite in the championship game. Oh. Denman got fouled. Named that on his backside, he'll have three free throws. That's right, 
now on Stetman. Oh, man. I'm not a big fan of that kick, leg kick out. Watch right here. This, this. Uh, I think Tyrus came in with a little extra curricular with that left arm, but uh, Stetman, you're going to shoot that far out and basically got to propel your body forward. Yeah. That could cause the foul. Well, Justin Detman's winning share will be set with Zell, who's expecting a bunch of fives on a check. 55,555 bucks. Should they win it all? I asked Justin today, and we were doing the I said, where's the favorite place to play? He said, China. The great seats there. That's right. It's cheap. <laughs> Tied at 41. Kelly, size advantage working on Detman. Malube trying to help out, called to the foul. Now this young guy, Rashard Kelly, if you watched him over four years, he was the epitome of the toughness of the shockers. And watch what you see. Denman tries to pack off and pull the chair out again, but Kelly went right to Malube, made some contact. And Frederick, Fredericksburg, Virginia. What a player he was. Richard Kelly currently playing in Turkey. Where does Turkey stand in the list of Very good basketball. Up yep. 30 former NBA players in that league this year. Yeah. In fact, there's a kid that's going to go in the first 15 picks. I'm not doing the draft for ESPN this year. I'll be at the Olympics. But uh, Alperin Shindu. I didn't know that's how you pronounce it. It's a okay. big kid, yep. He's 18 years old, and he was the MVP in the league with 30 former NBA players. Okay. Two on that one. I always find it amazing that leagues like Turkey could be that good. Yeah. You think about it in the grand scheme of things, Mehmet Okur, Mahito Turkoglu, have been a whole bunch of guys who have come from Turkey to make it to the NBA. And I think we got blood. And yeah, we've got blood on Richard Kelly. I'll tell you, you know, you know who Rashad Kelly played with last year? I'm going to give you this name. You guys, Chicago guy. Guys, guys, David Hunter. Remember that name? Ch Chicago State. Oh, my God. Cougars. 5'7 guy who was killing it in France. Killing it. All right, we have more coming your way tomorrow. This will be the uh, final two games uh, of this third round in the West Virginia Regional. 7 o'clock and a 9 o'clock start. We've already had one team advance to the fourth round. That happened earlier today. Florida TNT, just a remarkable comeback against uh, Everline Drive, the number one seed here in this Wichita Regional. I have a lot of fans in the town, but they were not happy with me when I said West Virginia would uh, get beat early. And it looks like they're not going to get beat early. So uh, the pepperoni rolls in Florida town are going to dry up for me. <laughs> uh, and by the way, I want to correct myself. Uh, our guy Rashad Kelly is going to France this year to play with David. He's going to Dijon, which coincidentally is the team that Gerald Robinson, who we saw in the first game with Everline Drive, uh, he played last year. No confusion. Okay, thank but there you. are all no. Straight. Here's the one thing that you need to know: there are only one-year deals. Now. Very rarely you sign. Yeah, it's amazing how many times you see guys play Turkey one year, Spain right. the next, France the next. They go to Greece, they go to Istanbul. They're just all over the globe. All right, we've uh, figured things out here. The blood's been cleaned up. We have a new uniform right now. Uh, what, Mark? Gerald Robinson had been wearing number 22. Yep. He has now switched over to number one. They must have had too much blood on the jersey that they couldn't control it. Gerald left Dijon and Rashad Kelly's arrival. Malubbe hands it off to Stevens. Detman. Aftershocks the lead of the ball. Six minutes to play, third quarter. McDuffie. All right, Jen Hale was telling us that Darren Collison believes he needs to get something out of Patrick Rembert here in this second half. Well, here's the opportunity for Patrick Rembert. Darren Collison sends him in to run the point. Rembert wears number two. This is his first day playing with Challenge ALS.
Harris. McGee looking cross court for Frank Camp. Keeps it. McGee. Are you kidding me? The longest possible two, and he hit it. Exactly what he's done throughout his career. It's almost as if he saw Patrick Rembert on him and said, I'm taking it. Yep. Tyrus McGee, former Iowa State star, sixth man of the year in the Big 12. That's what he does. He did it in college. He's doing it in Europe. That's a guy that played with George Niang and Naz Dietrich Long, Melvin Edgem, Chris Babb was in the NBA. Connor Frank Camp sits for the first time here in the second half. Clevin Hanna replaces him. David DeLeo also checks in for the aftershocks. DeLeo had a really good first half. Jordan Faison is in for challenge ALS. This is Lember. Got that barrel chest rolling and turns it over. Challenge ALS gets it right back. Oh, they had Faison. Good catch in tight quarters by Faison. Gentman, the finger roll. DeLeo. Takes a lot of confidence to take that shot. Yeah, too quick.
tomorrow, the uh, new NHL team in Seattle. Going to put their roster together. We'll bring you the expansion draft, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, on ESPN2 in the app. One app, one tap. Some of Seattle's biggest names will help out making the picks. Sue Bird, Lenny Wilkins, Sean Kemp, Gary Payton. And the list goes on and on and on. Let's get that Sonics franchise going again. Come on, Adam Silver. Vegas and Seattle. But that, I don't know if you can do that because the West is so low. How about the Seattle? One point game. After shocks, the lead in the ball. Samaje Haynes, Jones run the point. Now DeMonte Dodd looking for a bucket. He's scoreless so far in the contest. And he threw it out of bounds. Aftershocks are insisting that the ball went off of Challenge ALS. Nope. Nope. I'll we'll put it in play. I'd be going inside to uh, Deshaun Stevens with the Leo on him. And I like the ball screen here. To get the big guy settled. Long two for Harris. Rebounded by Don. Hannah is fouled. Hits the deck hard. Helped up pretty quickly by Marvell Harris. Always great sportsmanship in TBT. Hand right there. And it missed his only three throw attempt back in the first half. <laughs> Number one team here in the Wichita Regional has already gone down. Everline Drive, a loser on this floor earlier today. Florida TNT, led by Kenny Bork and others. Really impressive win. Florida TNT punching their ticket to championship week to date. One of these two sides will go as well. well. It's hard to get those offensive rebounds. It's a great defensive team. Look at that. McGee goes flying, and he'll go to the free throw line. The former Iowa State star has been a really good pro player around the world. Last year, he got a chance to play point guard in Israel. And did it so well, he's going to head to Spain in the ACB this coming season. He really had a nice career. He, he didn't start for Fred Hoiberg on a team that had three or four other NBA players. Deion, of course, Nazmi True Long, Chris Babb has been in the league. And by the way, went to junior college about 40 minutes from here. Cali County. Four-point lead for the Aftershocks. Rembert. Faison. Hit it. Wow. He was bumped. Still had the strength to hit the shot. Haynes Jones over to Hannah. God really wants it. Big oh, nice. Man. Oh, that's a move and a half. Yep. That is a big time move by the big man. Like a dancing bear in that footwork. 6'11, 248. The former Maryland Terrapin. Take a look. Tell me he isn't better. Then the guy that averaged three and three for Mark Turgeon just a few years ago. Played AAU and prep school basketball with Rashard Kelly. And what an addition. Three blocks a game coming in, and the offense is a bonus. Final two minutes of our third quarter. Challenge ALS a veteran bunch. They're not panicking. I like this. Stevens on to Leo. Harris. Saved somehow by Hayes Jones. Oh my goodness, you're kidding. <laughs> DeLeo got fouled. The most unlikely three 
quarter of the game, and he got fouled. That had no chance of going in. <laughs> so a mental mistake. Hey, when a guy makes over 300 threes in college, there are no unlikely threes. <laughs> oh, man, what a break. He's not missing these. Now he's gonna miss the second pick today. <laughs> that one is too pure. Look at this. That's There's no right way here. that ball's gonna go in. Bail out. <laughs> Some things you guess at, other things you just know, friend. Come on, you hang with me. I'll teach you a little something. Now he's gonna make this one. This week, Wednesday Night Baseball features a great pitching matchup. Kyle Hendricks, the Cubs, going to take on the veteran righty Adam Wainwright and the Cardinals. Action starts 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Get in there. Told you, friend. <laughs> Meatloaf special, two out of three ain't bad for DeLeo. And you made me look like a genius, an astute genius. Trying to prove his worth. Rebounded Stevens. And that's hard to do because Wichita State has done a great job tonight on a defensive board. But Stevens is a workhorse. Grant Camp back into the game in the backcourt with Haynes Jones. This is McDuffie. And an offensive foul on Marcus McDuffie. Been a game of runs. Yep. And this is an opportunity for it. This is a classic two for one situation. And it, in my mind, you get the two for one, you get the shot up at around 40. Now JLS, the veteran team, play together a lot. There you go. Shoot it. Harris. Yep. Three pointer, Marvell Harris. Gotta have a two for one plan, and these guys all do. This time it's on Donna. Easy call. Todd, Todd's got to hold the final shot of the third quarter. Let's see. Uh, let's, just, let's just step up there. Shows that left shoulder. And this is classic two for one if they can score here. <laughs> God, just leaned his shoulder in. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. This would be huge. A two would be wonderful for Challenge ALS. A three would be marvelous. Okay. He's member. Just joined the team yesterday. What about seven? Go ahead. Sets up Robinson. Got it! What a way to end the quarter! I'll tell you what. Challenge ALS put on a clinic in the last 50 seconds. It absolutely, absolutely, Eric, absolutely. They had the clock in their head the whole time, and they go from being down to up one. Amazing execution, Holmes. TBT, the basketball tournament, is presented by Puma and by Air Force Reserve. Explore your opportunities with Air Force Reserve.
quarter. Challenge ALS leads by one. Let's take a deeper look at Challenge ALS with details by 99 Designs by Mr. French. Uh, of course, coached by NBA veteran Darren Collison. Ten years in the league. Uh, the team name, the team is inspired by the Ice Bucket Challenge. It's team latest. For more, let's check in with Jen Hale. Eric, you're exactly right. Challenge ALS, such a fan favorite because of what they stand for. Marvell Harris wearing number 23, Pete Frady's name on the back of his jersey. Frady's was a best baseball player at Boston College. His roommate was a guy by the name of Sean Marshall. Marshall is now the GM of this Challenge ALS team, and he started this team to raise awareness about ALS when Frady's was diagnosed with ALS. Unfortunately, Pete lost his battle with ALS in 2019, but of course his name, his memory, his legacy, they all live on for many reasons, because he founded the Ice Bucket Challenge, and partly because of this team right here. So when people see that number 23 out on the court, it is a reminder of all that Frady's did, not only for patients diagnosed with ALS, but their loved ones and awareness for this disease. What a perfect guy to wear it and epitomize what Pete Frady stood for in Marvell Harris. Powerful, powerful. 22 points for Marvell Harris wearing that number 23. That leads both sides by a bunch. It is a three-point lead for Challenge ALS. They've weathered the storm once again, put on by the aftershock. Robinson, the miss. Oh, nice pass. Head of the pack, McDuffie. How did they lose him? Slow getting back and almost a steal again by McDuffie. He was the hero against the Omaha Blue Crew in the Elam ending. Robinson fouled by Frank Hill. Nice cut by Gerald Robinson and good patience by Marvell Harris not to jack it up. Watch this, just a good look ahead. Just somebody didn't get back. And Tyrus McGee, who we've talked about making that transition to point guard. Easy basket. Challenge ALS, their largest lead four. They trailed by as many as nine. And as we talked about it, when it was happening, into that third quarter, there was a momentum shift with the way that Challenge ALS so professionally ended the quarter. Oh, no question. These guys don't get rattled. We don't think they will. You see the back of that shirt, Mark Fisher. And Mark's watching tonight. He's the son of Steve Fisher, who has been battling ALS for 10 years. And we communicated today. And Mark said, nobody embodies the spirit of San Diego State that Steve Fisher era more than this kid, Deshaun Stevens. Wow, that's heavy three. Yeah, we're thinking of it, you, Mark. We know you're battling. Nick Duffy, tough chance. McGee trying to save it, last touch by who? Last touch by the Aftershocks. You know, to your point, Eric, when you think of the places these guys have played around the world, China, Bosnia, uh, the Ukraine, it's hard to have 8,000 people really rattle these guys. They've been close for so long. Yeah, you some of those European places. You got guys smoking in the sands and throwing things on the floor. Yeah. And, yeah, it's not an environment like we're used to here in the States. This is child's play. <laughs> Yeah, Seriously, you get hit with a hot coin or a bottle or... You watch some of those games over in Europe and it's a big cloud of smoke yeah. in the upper deck of those arenas. Deshaun Stevens is going to Bosnia next year. Remember, trust me, they'll have some points thrown at him. McDuffie picks up the loose ball. Here's McGee ahead of the pack. Lays it up and in! One point game. This is TBT basketball. Elo Mendings will be a factor here. Remberg, big chance. And it's aftershock ball. Once we get below the four minute mark, once we get that stoppage, whoever is leading at eight points to their score, and that'll be the target score that both sides will have to get to to win the game. The game clock taken off. They'll play the shot clock, but we'll finish with an Elam ending, which means you have to win with a made basket. He's sizing him up. It's the deck, and it's out of bounds. Too much. Too much ISO there. Connor Frank Camp has been 
relatively quiet. Yeah. Six points, Brent. Joe Robinson, he and he and Connor are having a little discussion right here. That's been a great battle. Detman. Ooh, may have gotten away with a double dribble. I thought he touched it with two hands. Offensive rebound stays with Challenge ALS. I like it into his hands. How about Marvell Harris? Detman using that good body of his to draw contact. Justin Detman played on some great Washington Husky teams. He's had a long career around the world. Cup of coffee in the NBA. Eight NBA games. That's a cup of coffee. A cup of swigs. <laughs> I give I give anything for one of them. Right. Yeah. He got it. For darn sure. <laughs> the best of the best. Yep. He at one point was one of the best 450 in the world. Still one of the best two for seven out. Two point game. 5:30 remaining. Elam ending starts once we get underneath four minutes to play. Robinson, great job on Frank Cam. A switch. Hannah. Zach Brown. Offensive foul. Oh, we saw that coming from here. All Justin did, Justin Devin did was just wait there for Zach to come at him. Very easy call. Watch Zach. He set yesterday. So it's scored as a turnover, and we've got a timeout. Dallas ALS with the lead, seemingly with momentum and possession of the ball. They want to have a good offensive possession right here. Challenge ALS up by a pair. Rembert being hounded by McGee. Now Harris has a chance. He's been the leading scorer, 22 points. Well, I like the switch. Double team gives it up. Detman, four on the shot clock. No damage done to the aftershocks. Grant Camp got fouled by Harris. Good foul right there over the second team foul. Harris knew there was no way he was going to stay in front of Frank Camp. Smart play. Frank Camp just six points. Kelly. Now 
challenge ALS can just dribble it below the four minute mark if they want to. They've got three timeouts left. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The tough part is if they take a timeout, they're not going to have much time on the shot clock. Let's see if Darren Collison does it. Time. He did it. Okay. He's got nine. He's got the target score set. So the target score will be 68. Both sides will need to get to 68 to advance the championship week in Dayton, July 31st. All right, the E1 ending when we come back to Wichita. To the ball. They gotta get it in first. Loose picked up. Free camp. Ball You don't want to bring defenders to the ball. They got to get it in first. Loose, picked up, free camp, ball game! There was magic in this building just two days ago for the Aftershocks. Connor Frank Camp winning it. Will we have similar heroics tonight? The Elam ending. Target score is 68. Challenge ALS leads by two. And Fran Priscilla, they've got the basketball. Got to go quick. They took the timeout, but uh, they've got, oh, you know what? They didn't reset the shot clock. They got a fresh 30 seconds. I'm not sure that that isn't a mistake. It was nine seconds on the shot clock. When they called the timeout. Harris, rip, last rim it in. He is money. That was a two for Harris. They're six points away. Look at Hannah. Harris, Robinson, Rembert, Stevens. And a mismatch. Five on the floor. Get it back to him. Oh, good job. And Connor Frank Camp. Let's see if Marvell is okay. Frank Camp denied Harris back cut, and by back cutting, he charged. Watch him keep him from getting it. So Marvell does the right thing, except watch the defense. Ooh, he landed right on the knee of Hannah. His face landed right on the knee.
Well, we've seen this man play three games now, and Marvell Harris is tougher than woodpecker lips. Yeah. I can't yeah. imagine the scenario he has to leave the game. He's going to get a hand, too, because he's a basketball fan, too, in Wichita. Pacific surf line right there. That's the end track of Santa Barbara to San Diego. He is a train. Target score is 68. First team to get there wins it and will punch their ticket to the fourth round. Once you get to Dayton, you need three wins to win one million dollars. I like what Zach Bush is doing. He's going three. Guards, they can all score with Kelly and Brown, two guys who do the dirty work. Aftershock's down a pair. They need eight points to win the ball game. Hannah. Got it! He's got all five for the Aftershocks.
possession was going nowhere. Zach Bush calls timeout. After shots can win it with a noose. It always like this. Each team has a foul to give. So you got to stay aggressive. Let's see if we can get into that after shocks huddle. What I like about this team right now, we said it a couple minutes ago, they have three playmakers in the back of the room. Hannah, McGee, Fran Camp, and the two workhorses up front are getting all Garrett Stutz, former big man here, won an NIT title to get this program rolling. There's a guy throwing up that play in the huddle. By the way, the owner of Chicken and Pickle, if you're ever coming through Wichita, play a little pickleball. Marvell Harris is also not going to be on the floor here. So Harris, with 24 points, but he does have five fouls. Is not to be on the floor defensively for Challenge ALS. After shots made a deuce. If they can score a field goal, either a two or a three, this one's over. They want the backdoor cut. Fred Camp, he got it! Oh, wave it off! An offensive foul! Wow! What did I just see? Play and great defense. Shots a chance at another possession. Challenge ALS a three and they win it. A two and we continue playing. And no Marvell Harris. Gotta get a three. Dead man. Loose picked up by McGee. Numbers for the aftershocks. This will do it. And a foul. say that McDuffie was in the act of shooting, so we'll have two free throws for the win. Just a really good job by Connor Frankamp to keep his head up. Oh, my. Harris still on the bench. He missed them both. Eric, I'm still playing for the three ball. But it's got to be, got to have good ball movement. Set some screens. And a timeout. Challenge ALS wants to talk it over. Can you believe what we're seeing? Just amazing. Challenge ALS. They trail by a point they need a three to win this time down the floor. If I'm the aftershocks, we are getting up on the three-point line, and we're switching everything, and we're not going to be baited by the drive into the paint and the kick out. I give up a two here before they get an open look. If you're Darren Collison, let's watch. All right, get the ball. Jordan, you're coming over the top. You're acting like you're saying the screen. Deshaun, nail him. Danny, come to the corner. If we don't have it, just come into the pick and roll. Relax, y'all. Let's go. 
they're going to try to set a double screen. But here's what I would tell you. Human nature in basketball says that when a guy drives it all the way to the paint, everybody cheats in, even when the coach says don't cheat in. They're going to try to set something up here for the three, but I like dribble penetration kickouts here. Still no Harris. Nope. Watch Denman. He's on the baseline. He's going to come off the double. Robinson. There he is. They switch. Robinson darts inside. Uh-oh. Lambert. Denman. Six seconds on the shot clock. Loose kick around. And a shot clock violation. What suffocating defense. Just in case you're wondering, this is the Elam ending. Connor Frankamp just ran up to three different aftershock players and said, I'm shooting. Wow. It was clear as day. He mouthed it. I'm shooting the ball. Look who's guarding him. No fouls to give now if you're AL challenge ALS. So Frank Camp said, I'm shooting it. He's got the ball right here. He's waving everyone away. <laughs> AL, Challenge ALS is going to hit a three here. They're going to hit a three. Watch Connor. It's great defense by Faison who switched on to him. Terrific defense. Out of timeouts. JLS needs a three to win. No way. Rembert missed everything. Just joined the team yesterday playing hero ball. <laughs> a two wins it for the aftershock. This is what it's like when you're playing for a million dollars. Oh, man. He's got it. Robinson didn't want to take. Foul to give. Rembert. Denman. Six to shoot. For the win. That one's blocked. Numbers right now for the aftershock. playing games in this building. He played three years for Wichita State playing in this building. On Sunday, when he hit an Elam ending game winner, he said it was the biggest shot he'd ever hit in this building. I think this one supersedes it. Without a doubt, halfway to a million dollars. Three games here, and Eric, in eight years of doing TBT, I've never seen a regional like this. Unbelievable basketball.
This is a basketball town for a reason. And now the aftershocker heading to the big bracket. I said, how many points was having home court advantage worth to this aftershock team? I think it was worth four points. It's uh, this is this is Wichita State basketball in a different iteration. This is alumni coming home, pouring their heart and soul out like they've always done in this building. All right, we've waited long enough. Jen Hale and Dr. Helam ending Connor Frank Hale. What an amazing ending indeed. You couldn't have scripted it any better. Connor, okay, the headset's not working, so we'll just pull it off. Connor, you scored six points all game up until the end. We could clearly see you in, in the timeout saying, I'm gonna take the shot. What made you step up then at that moment? I was pretty tired tonight all night. Um, last game kind of wore me out. Um, it's been a while since I played three games in six days, so I got to get used to that. But um, I was just able to knock that shot down. Tyrus drove and kick it to me, and I was able to be wide open. It has been a grind, but you triumphed. It was a battle till the end. It seemed like nobody could win it there for a while. At the end of Sunday's game, when you took the game winner, you said it was one of the best moments that you'd ever had here in this arena. How does tonight's winning shot compare? Um, they're both pretty close. Um, once again, we played great defense in the Elam ending. Both teams did, actually. Um, so it was a hard-fought battle again. Um, a long game, a tiring game, but it was a great win for us. A great win that sends you now on to Dayton. What does this team do between now and then to prepare? Um, I think some guys will probably go back home and kind of get refreshed. Um, I think we have a week or so until, maybe two weeks until we play. So go home, get some rest. We're hoping the guys would stay around here long. I'm from here, so. It's been awesome having the guys here and hanging out and doing all the stuff with them. Your post-game celebration was awesome. I'm going to let you get back to the guys. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank guys. You. Now, kudos uh, to the people who made the decision with TBT to get this Aftershocks team playing here uh, in this building in front of these rabid fans. Largest crowd in the history in the eight years of TBT. And, man, did they see a ball game. Yeah, no question, Eric. This is why TBT decided to come to Wichita, because these fans love basketball. They love the former players who poured their heart and soul out on this court in Coke Arena. And uh, we couldn't have had a better weekend of great games, great endings, great players. And then tonight to culminate it with one of the great endings in basketball in a long time. Oh, man, I'm whipped. All right, Fran, I got to ask you, you've seen more TBT than anyone else. Aftershocks, they just won a ball game, but spin it forward. Yeah. They're going to be in the short pants again July 31st in Dayton. What kind of chance do they have to win it all? Well, see, they're like they're like an, inter an international team who doesn't play much together, but they have the continuity like a Australia. That's what this guy, this, these guys have. They have the love of playing together for years and years. They come together for a week, a little training camp, hanging out in Wichita. And uh, it's pretty, pretty fun. It's awesome the fact that Connor Frank Camp. We've talked about it. He's from Wichita. He played collegially here in Wichita. The fact that he won a ball game here two days or two times in a three-day window. Wow, what an experience for him. All right, that's going to do it. Sure, hope you enjoyed it. We are done here in Wichita. Coming up next, we are going to have Sports Center right here on ESPN. Uh, for my partner, Fran Frischilla, Jen Hale, and our entire crew, I'm Eric Collins. Have a good night, everybody.